Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to What Up Click. This show we're talking about all kinds of things, how to fix how to build, how to maintain or proc reviews. If you guys have anything out there, any projects that are coming up, something you're having a problem with working, getting to work or clean or whatever, let me know and I will see if I can do a, a video on it. Today, we're going to talk about the Makuni carburetor. This came off of a uh, 2002 Kawasaki KX125. Excellent motorcycle, excellent carburetor. This right here is, the, like I said, the Makuni carburetor. It's a flat slide uh, carburetor. What that means is that if you look at the slide, it's flat, not round. It is flat um, versus... Uh, Something like this here. This is the standard round one. This is the flat. I'll go over the difference between them. Why some people prefer the flat versus the round. Um, again, this right here came from two stroke. It works uh, a little bit like a four stroke carburetor. This one here. You have the, for adjusting the uh, the idle, you have a screw here that goes, goes in and out. And when you push it in, it causes the slide to go up. Just like in the four strokes, the key in carburetors, um, we tune those, it adjusts um, airflow and gas mixture and stuff like that. You have to see my video that I've done on that, and I'll we'll have a better explanation for it. But so we'll go ahead and take this thing apart here, and I'll show you what's going on with this thing. If you learn about how this thing works, hopefully that'll help you on how to troubleshoot if there's any problems. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Okay, first thing when this thing comes apart, unlike the, some of the other carburetors you see out there, um, the other carburetors you see out there, you'll have screws that go in the corners all the way around, and that right there is pretty much, take those screws out, three, four screws, and the bolt comes off. There's right here's the foot bolt. On this carburetor here, you take off this nut right here on the bottom, this section right here. Now, this right here is a, um, it's a nice quick way to disassemble the carburetor to take the bowl off. The only downfall I don't, the only thing I don't like about it is that when you twist it off, you see the holes right here. That is how you drain the bowl. You loosen this up, gas flows out the side. I don't like that because it goes all over the motor, all over everything. I don't like it. It's just not as clean. Um, Another thing about these carburetors here that I don't like is you can see this right here. That is the main jet. The main jet pokes right there at the bottom, which means it's going inside this nut here, which is the lowest part of the float of the football. Well, what else goes at the bottom of the football? Dirt, debris, what have you. This right here has a better chance of sucking the stuff up. That's why one thing about these carburetors here, the Makunis, they get clogged up more often than other carburetors that don't go all the way down to the bottom here. Um, so let's go ahead and take this right here off. Now inside you see the floats, you see the jets, you see the main jet here. Um, you see the uh, float valve right down in here. Now, this right here, this is kind of like a, a splash guard uh, shield for when the gas is splashing around. It still doesn't interrupt gas flow that goes inside the idle jet right here. Idle jet, slow jet, there's many names for it, but the jet that you see right down in there that is the idle jet or slow jet whatever you want to call it this right here is the main jet I don't know any other names for it but main jet um, the slow jet the idle jet pilot jet JD jet whatever jet you want to call it let me take this cap off so you can see it better this one right here about zero to 20% of the fuel flow comes from this jet right here. Once you get up to 20% above, this jet right here starts sucking in more air, fuel comes through this jet. So you actually get fuel from both jets. So one thing that I'll show you here on the slide 
Remember I mentioned about the screw right here on the side that adjusts the uh, the the idle of this uh, of the motorcycle. So if I loosen up, it has a lock nut on there. If I loosen that up, that's one thing I don't like. Another thing I don't like about this is you have to loosen this nut up in order to adjust the, the idle. The problem is sometimes when you go and you tighten down that nut, if you don't have a screwdriver on it where you're tightening the nut down at the same time, that screw can turn and it throws your idle off a little bit. But if you look at your sl the slide right there, if I turn the screw in, you'll see the slide go up. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but the slide starts to go up as you twist that screw. So, you can see it's a, it's a bit higher up now than it was before. Go ahead and back that thing out. If I back it out, and you see I push on it and it will go down. So, one thing about the slides, they're, they're channeled. Let me pull it out. So it's channeled. You have these uh, wings on the side right here that go inside there. These right here on the side, those are just the uh, the spacers. So you have these screws right here, right there, and on the other side, screw there, screw there. That holds those uh, those chrome blocks on each side. But this right here is channeled. It allows minimal allow a minimal amount of bypass with the airflow so therefore the air only flows where it's supposed to flow which is between this here and the bottom of the uh, intake the bottom of the carburetor so if you look at the round ones let me grab a round one here look at this one here it's a cylinder shape but there's no it doesn't have any wings on it's just round so it has a air does flow around goes bypasses around the sides of the of the slide here which does not make it as accurate as the flat slide carburetor so that's one thing about this flat slide carburetor now the uh, one thing I, I was going to clean this up but I wanted you to see so this bike was sitting for a while it would it wouldn't start I went and got some starter fluid, shot some starter fluid in it, bike fired right up. But it would not stay running. So that tells me that the mo the carburetor is not giving the motorcycle fuel. If you look at this needle here, you'll see that there is like a green film on it. It's, it's somewhat sticky. This is what builds up inside your carburetor when you let your motorcycle sit. Whenever you let your motorcycle sit, you should always drain the float bowl. Take off the little bolt at the end, little screw, whatever it takes, take the fuel out of it. Otherwise, you'll get this type of buildup right here. This right here is uh, more likely going to be the two-stroke oil residue that's built up on this. So, let me go over this needle right here and adjustments on this and uh, explain how to adjust the needle depth. So the, uh, let's go ahead and put that aside, put that aside. So on these here, you have to take the, like a little screw in. Yeah, I do have snap-on tools. I just don't do Milwaukee tools. I only got the snap-on tool because it had a great deal on it. Smoking deal. It was, uh, what was it, $200. If you buy one for $200, you get a whole set of six for free. Yeah, great deal. Anyhow. Take this thing out, take the needle out. So the needle, if you're running a little rich or you're running a little lean when you're full throttle, you can adjust the needle depth inside the the main the main jet. If you see the little little grooves right here. You can move this E-clip right here 
and put it inside these these grooves so if it's running lean when it's running lean that means you're not getting enough fuel if it's running rich that means you're getting too much fuel if it's running lean you want more fuel that means see how this right here is tapered so the the more the needle comes out of the the main jet the more fuel you get which means it, it gets richer that's what you want you want more fuel so if it's running lean you want to take this needle and you want to move it down and what that would do is that have your bike run more rich and if it's running too rich you back it up or run lean uh, how you uh, adjust uh adjust this for different uh, altitudes what have you and depending on how your bike's running you can tell by how your bike's running by looking at the the color on your spark plug um, there's a lot of graphs out there not, not graphs but a lot of uh, pictures out there show you how to look at your spark plugs and tell if it's running rich lean what have you so that's the needle let's go ahead and get more into the carburetor so another thing is different about this carburetor that uh, is different from what some of the other carburetors like the Kane Keen however you want to pronounce I heard from many different ways depending on who you talk to but the float is held in place by this set screw right here so the set screw on other carburetors they don't have a set screw they just have a shaft right here that slides right out so take the set screw out the floats fall out now when floats fall out you want to be very very careful not to lose the float valve the the valve stop right here this right here is what uh, plugs up the hole right inside here that just fits down there slides in and out and it prevents fuel from flowing through here so the fuel throws the goes through this hole comes out of there when it float starts to get full or float bowl gets full this right here will float up and when this twists up this way this tongue right here this right here fits inside of there so when it goes up it'll push on the, the float valve and it'll plug up the hole stop the, the fuel from flowing now when you check the float on these the, the fuel level inside the float bowl check with your uh, your owner's manual but uh, most of them about all I know all the carburetors I've ever seen they will sometimes have a mark on the bowl on where the the fuel stops what I usually do is I usually go to right about this lip right about halfway to this lip almost to almost to the uh, to where it separates is where I go to I usually go to that point haven't had any issues with any of the carburetors I ever worked on so and they actually bikes will start up real nice I have a CR 500 and I can kick that sucker over within two kicks and that's not a lie that is absolute true truth to that so um, with the float bowl when you're cleaning this you want to make sure you get all the gunk out of here you get all the dirt debris um, use a carburetor cleaner spray it out real nice you also want to make sure that you clean out this this stem here this right here is the overflow valve so if the if the fuel goes above this level it'll come out it'll drip and it'll go out this hole right here make sure that this right here is not plugged up if it is plugged up and the and the floats right here doesn't shut off because debris or something like that gets inside of this then uh you're going to have an engine full of fuel and if you have a four stroke it's going to be real bad because then you have a crankcase full of fuel so this right here makes always make sure that you can blow through this and uh it's clear 
So a little bit more on this here. Um, this piece here, you can pull this out simply by twisting this screw right here out and it'll allow this piece right here, right there, the actual valve section, float valve section to come out. Now, when you pull it out, sometimes you have to use new nose pliers, but make sure you grab from the outside. You don't grab from the inside, otherwise you will scar the inside. This is just brass, so it will scar real easy. Some of these right here will have screens on them on the inside to help filter, but even still, a lot of dirt bikes, they don't come with uh, inline fuel filters. I highly recommend that you put inline fuel filters on all your dirt bikes. Uh, it will cut down on so much hassle, so many problems, because a lot of fuel out there is dirty, or if you get any dirt in your gas tank, whatever, it's going to go inside. And a lot of gas tanks also have screens inside the, the stems, but in, sometimes those stems fall out and you don't even know it and you end up getting dirt inside your carburetor and it just it just wrecks habit it's just just put an inline fuel filter on it it's not going to hinder the performance of your bike if fuel will still flow fast enough um so that's the floats and the float valves clean them off make sure you clean them good these right here you kind of want to get just get a new one rather than trying to just clean it um you can get uh, rebuild kits um i use uh tusk there's a bunch of different brands out there i mean there are kits from china never had any issue with the kits from china as long as you make sure that if you tr replace the uh, one of the um, jets that you get one the right size now the main jet this right here is the main jet you can tell the size a lot of times it'll be posted right here on the back along this section here or sometimes it'll be posted around the sides so that's the main jet um, the idle jet these are loose because I loosened them up earlier if you're wondering they're not supposed to get the finger tightness they're supposed to be uh, actually tied with a screwdriver so but the pilot jet slow jet um, same thing with these sometimes you'll see the 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 size right here on the back top of it or you'll actually see it on on the side here Right here's a 45 so when you're cleaning a jet every jet has a hole that goes all the way through it goes all the way through when you look through it you will see you should be able to see daylight through it if you don't that means it's plugged up you can try blowing through it whatever just because you can blow through it you can see sunlight through it does not mean it's clean what you have to do is you have to get yourself a, a jet cleaning kit if you don't buy new ones you can use a jet clean kit this right here uh, i think i got off amazon for probably five bucks um it's uh has a bunch of different size uh cleaners on it um you just find out which one it fits slide it in there and uh just work it you don't want to uh do it too much because then you take too much material out um i've been cleaning with these rods for for decades and I've never had a jet that didn't work properly because too much material came off it just you just have to be careful not to take too much material off same thing with the main jet these here you need to be able to see all the way through see daylight all the way through if you put a light on the other side you can see it and you just work until you find the right one that that right there that one's too big so I go the next one down that one's nice so you just work it a couple times gets that green film off it you spray it with the uh, with the cleaner carburetor cleaner and gets all the gunk out right in here same thing in here you just spray it out with the cleaner down this hole and it takes care of everything same with this hole so on so that's the jets if you have any questions about the jets put it down in the uh, comment section uh don't be afraid i answer i'm pretty fast on the answer and i'm getting right back to responding on those questions so now let's talk more about the carburetor and how the carburetor and all the holes and orifices and all the other stuff work so
Now, you'll see some holes on this side. This side right here, you see this hole here? That right there is for the air fuel mixture. There is a screw right here on the side that comes out. This here also, when you clean it, you need to take this out. You have to be careful. There is a spring inside that holds this, this screw in place to keep it from loosening up while you're riding from the vibrations. So, how this works, see that there? Some of these will actually also have a rubber O-ring on the end of it. The rubber O-ring also helps it not only seal it, but to keep it from, from twisting and sliding out. So what this does right here is this regulates the airflow into your main jet. Now, if you ever suck through a straw and it had a hole in it, you can still get liquid through the straw, but with the hole, you don't get as much. You plug up the hole, you get nothing but straight liquid. Let a little bit, let a little air in, you get less, uh, less fuel. That is how this works. If you're running rich, you can let out, let the screw out, and it'll let more airflow into this right here, into your main jet. You will then get less fuel. Um, if you're running lean, same thing. This is basically how you adjust it when you're going to different higher or higher altitudes, lower altitudes, whatever. Higher altitudes, you have less air, so therefore you want to open this up to let more air flow through here, and then vice versa. So that is how this right here works. Um, you have, uh, you'll see these two things here. This one here, that port right there, and this valve right there, port valve, whatever you want to call it. These two right here on the sides. There's holes right here in the back. You see them right there. Those are just vent lines. Because there's you're having a fuel getting sucked through here, you don't want this right here to turn into a vacuum because then you won't be able to suck anything out of it. So these holes right here allow air pressure to go in and keeps pressure regulated inside. Um, this right here, this stem here, works for the idle. Works with the idling. So, not the idling, I'm sorry. This works with the choke. So the choke, when you choke your motorcycle, what you're doing is you're allowing your bike to run rich. You're getting more gas inside the bike because the bike fires. The more gas that's inside of it, the uh, more it fires. Unless you get too much in it, and then it floods it out. Hold on a story. So the, when you open up the choke, you pull this right here, you open the choke. What that does is that allows air to flow through this orifice. Well, if you see this orifice, it flows down through here, and it picks up with this line because you see it go this way, then you see this line from here go this direction. See there, there you go for this direction, and so this meets up with it. That meets up with it. This one right here meets up with it. Here's just everything is all coming together. So when you pull this choke out, what it does it allows fuel to flow through this right here. So now your bike is there's a tremendous amount of suction coming from that that cylinder. I mean, you got a cylinder that's like this big around and it's just, and it's probably doing a stroke about this far. Anyways, it's sucking a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, air and fuel in there. Mostly air. So it's going to suck fuel th up through here, up to this line here. And it's going to suck air through here and it's going to come out of this side. So air flows, also flows through this side through carburetor, flows on the big side comes up the little side therefore it faster airflow turbulence so on and so forth so that's how you get in then when it warms up you close this right here boom and it's done now if you want to see what it looks like inside right here is just a plunger so it has a rubber piece here that that stops up the uh, the fuel from flowing and this right here blocks off the hole from the air coming through if you look inside you will see let me get my flashlight here so you can see better. There, now you can see the uh, 
See the hole down there where the fuel comes through? And so on, man, while you're looking at it, see this right here. That right there is the, you can see the, the hole for the main jet. That right there is the hole that the needle goes through. What happens, how that works, is the needle goes down through this hole right there. This pipe. Well, on the other side of this pipe, it's open. See right there? I put my screwdriver inside so it's open, so it's only a half round. What that does as air is flowing through this direction, it causes a vacuum on the other side. And when it causes a vacuum on the other side, it sucks the fuel through this main jet right here, up through there and out that hole. That's how you get the fuel into the motorcycle. So with the pilot jet, so this is the pilot jet here, it goes through here, fuel, fuel goes through there, and it comes up that little hole right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's that little hole right there. That's where that comes out through. So, and then when it's when you have the uh, for the choke, the choke comes up through the side hole right here on the side. There's a little hole right here on the side. That's where the fuel comes out when you open the choke. So there's holes and orifices and all kinds of things throughout this whole entire carburetor. So now, if your bike, I'll give you some little troubleshooting tips here. So if your bike is running. Idle's great, everything's good, but when you go and you crack the throttle to half throttle or more, it starts to bog out like it wants to die. You are running, chances are you're running uh, lean. You're not getting enough fuel. How you can see if that's true is you just take your hand and you have to take your, your, your box off or maybe you can stick your hand down inside the box, air box, whatever. But you cover up a portion of the of the carburetor, the inlet side. Don't use a rag. Don't use something flimsy like cardboard or something like that. There's a tremendous amount of suction coming through this. It will suck that rag right inside. It will suck that cardboard inside. Whatever. Uh, use your hand. Use a, a piece of wood or whatever. But it's not going to hurt. It's not going to like suck your hand on there you can't get your hand off if you cover the whole thing like this the bike will just die but if you cover up half of it and you wrap the throttle and it revs higher and it revs fine that means that you are running lean what you then need to do is you need to get yourself a bigger main jet i go up probably uh two sizes on your main jet uh you can get a one size up two size up and not that expensive it just play with it and find out what size what size work. Um, if you're uh, if you just if you gas it and it bogs out when you gas it and then res fine, it runs fine. Just when you you're starting out to give it a little big gas, just starting out and it bogs out. That means probably means your main jet or your pilot jet, idle jet, jiggity jet, whatever jet you want to call that thing. That probably means that run right there is too small. So you can adjust this here. Um, I don't. Let me see if I'm missing anything. I think I probably covered everything. If you have any uh, other issues, by all means, and you have questions, put them down in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, if you have any other projects, or any ideas for projects you want me to look at, troubleshoot, what have you, let me know. Let me know in the comments section. Um, if you like this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe. If you don't like my video, subscribe anyway just so you can make fun of me. Alright guys, you take care. We'll talk to you later.